G'day YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear Shed. Well the weather report, <laughs> oh it's been bloody lovely. The uh, temperature of the morning has been around 8 to 10 degrees so look that's a little bit cool for us. The top temperature throughout the day has been into the mid 20s. Um, we had a, oh, a couple of days ago, or oh, yesterday actually, we were out doing some work on the driveway and it seemed quite warm, but no, oh, well that's all right, eh? You gotta get out there and have a bit of a go. <laughs> I, I haven't done anything in the shed this weekend. We're going away on the August 30th. We're heading down south, going out down New South Wales, Victoria and things like that, and the daughter's coming to look after the place for us and stay here and look after Kelly dog, because that's Kelly's mum, really. And <laughs> the, she'll come and water the plants and do all sorts of stuff for us and feed the chooks and look after the dogs and do all that other stuff. But I've, I've been concerned for some time about the driveway and from the dams back up, we, we got all the um, bloody phone, I should turn it off. <laughs> um, the driveway, as you have a driveway and you run over it over the years, well, in the wet, well, probably 18 months, two years ago, where your track runs, the gravel tends to go over to the side, into the, into the ditch, into the gutter sort of thing, as it's built up, and very sandy soil here, so we, we had about 150 millimetres of road base put down, and look, over the years, that's lasted probably 12, 15 years, so we've had a really good run out of it. But when the rain was here last time, which is not, not the October just gone, the one before that was when we had a good wet season. So it's look as dry as chips here now. And when I got the pads done up the front and the new carport put up to put the caravan in and things like that, the fella was supposed to do the driveway as well but if you remember back then it was a bit of a long story the he quoted like three thousand five hundred dollars and halfway before he done the driveway here i asked how much was a load of gravel i was thinking of getting another one and he said oh geez i've put a heap more into your job already so i told him to stop the job and work it out and he we we're up on seven thousand six hundred dollars then so i pulled the pin on that job I got someone else in to finish the gravel. I bought another load of gravel myself. I got someone else in to finish the job off. I pissed him off out of it. And we agreed on $5,600. But that, look, that's, that's back in old videos. But what that did was part of that job originally was he was going to bring the semi-trailers uh, semi in and we were going to top dress the driveway with probably another 100, 150 millimetres of um, road base but with the price blowout on the first job I pissed him off off the place and look I, I really felt I couldn't afford to do the driveway then so I've, I've had an old port multi-blade sitting over under the trees a little bit and I got it out yesterday and my friend Paul was here and Paul was working he brought his little Austin out and we were working on his Austin and the car show video I had a few months ago well Paulie's little Austin with a little rum barrel in the back. He's a good friend of mine. And, and we've been having, he's been having a little bit of oil pressure trouble with his car. But then yesterday we we're looking at the uh, rocket wreck home he made. He turned up to have a look and, and have a yarn because we're all, all friends. And the carby on the little Austin was leaking and it's got a Solex carby on it. And the, it had a banjo bolt and a, a thread going into the top of the carby. And that thread, you know, I was leaking there a bit and they went to have a look and you know, put a new fibre washer there, but um, the thread was crook. And so anyway, one thing leads to another and what we ended up doing, he, he had a, another carby. It wasn't the exact same carby, but the top was exactly the same. So we ended up pulling the top off his carby and putting the bead blasting the top. And it, it had really nice threads in the, the parts carby he had. So. Well, we spent an hour or so buggering around with his carby and, and we put a new top on and 
Look, it, it's, it looks good, yeah. It's a lovely thread. The, the banjo bolt that goes inside, um, that holds the banjo in, it had a lovely th thread on it. Where the spanner goes, his old one had um, sort of spanner marks and things on it. And the one he had in his parts cub was in far better nick. So we bead blasted all that and got him going with that. But then, well, we were buggering around. <laughs> He helped me take the slasher off the John Deere and we put the blade on and so then we pretended we, we knew what we were doing with roadworks, which he probably did, I didn't. And um, so we've done a, done a run down the driveway, which I'll take the camera out there after this, after this little chat and, and just show you what we've been up to. So, so no work in the shed and sometimes uh, in round Bundy here, it's not uncommon in September to have a few showers come through, um, mainly in the, in, well, storms. It's probably a little bit early for the storm season, but the weekend of October, the long weekend in October, we're going away as well. We've, um, we're going away with the local Rum City Vintage Machinery Club. We're, we're doing a little tractor trek from, uh, from, from here. Oh, actually from Wallaville, which is sort of 50 k's west of Bundaberg. Then we're going through the good night scrub and we're going to camp at Mingo Crossing for a few days. So, so we'll be home for one weekend, then we'll be, <laughs> we'll be off again. So that, the next opportunity to probably work on the place here will be mid-October. So I've, I wanted to get that driveway done just in case we got lucky and got some rain. Jeez, I bloody hope we do. And just so I wasn't pushing mud around. Uh, it was very dusty yesterday. I've called myself Dusty's Earthworks. <laughs> there was dust and shit going everywhere. Yeah, and the blade, the blade works well. It's a Port Multi, made in Adelaide, I believe. And look, they're a great blade. I've had that tucked away for years. I don't use it often. Our place now is at a stage where we don't need to do much in the, in the maintenance department. You know, keep the driveway tidy. The, out the back of Bundy Bear's shed, there was an old falcon ute that was upside down on its roof. That was left over from when the young bloke, when Tim had um, had a paddock bomb here and he used to tear around and he'd come around those bloody dams there and he'd be sideways and he'd be missing the back fence of the house yard there by probably a foot and mum would be at the kitchen doing stuff and <laughs> she'd be shitting. She'd be, <laughs> she'd be oh, oh, bloody Tim. <laughs> and she'd, She'd be worrying, she'd say, look at what he's doing. I was, yeah, yeah, that's good, he's learning to drive. And she's saying, oh, look, he's gonna hit that fence. And I was, oh, well, we'll fix it. And, but anyway, he roared around in this thing and he never did hit the fence. And she was worried about him drifting sideways through the grass paddocks, about him sliding into the dams. Well, he never did that either. So uh, I think it's a great thing for kids if, they, if, if you've got room, give them a bit of a paddock bomb. And, um, put up with a bit of dust for a few weekends. It's, it's good, clean fun for country kids and teaches them to drive, hopefully. And, but anyway, as, as that ute had its time, um, uh, we pinched some parts off it for someone, so we just flipped it over. But out the back, it's very sandy and I haven't been able to shift it. So my friend Chris, he was out here last weekend. I, I put a drive shaft in the big lathe in the Maxon and we parted a drive shaft off for him. And the, <laughs> it was a job for backpackers, you know, we're getting off track here a bit, but it was a job for backpackers and, and his mate owns a mechanical shop. And anyway, they, they had a Sanyong and they couldn't get a two wheel drive gearbox for it. They could only get a four wheel drive gearbox. So, but they had to um, um, shorten the drive shaft. So he brought it out and asked, could we do it in the lathe? So he shortened it. And, he took it home and after we took a foot out of it and he took it home and welded it up and and anyway they're going for a test drive and look it all went well the job was a good job the customers paid no worries but uh, what i'm getting to with it was they were going for a bit of a drive in the in the car making sure it was right and everything was good and they you know put the suspension up and down through its track to make sure um you know the shaft was the right length and all that and they took it for a drive and and he said they probably went around town half an hour, you know, through back roads and that, just making sure it was okay. And anyway, they got back, and as the backpackers paid for the job and headed off, in Queensland, there's a Queensland 
rego app you can get and I suppose every state has one and, and if I go to buy a car or if I see a car or I can look at one of my cars I can put the rego number in and it'll give you the VIN number um, that it's currently registered and all that. It doesn't tell you who it's registered to but it does say it's registered. So anyway they did a test he said oh I'll just run that through me thing. No rego. So here's these people driving all around Queensland and apparently, unbeknown to me, I don't know how they get away with it, unbeknown to me, a lot of backpackers buy these old shitbox cars and they come in and uh, apparently they can either come in down Melbourne or Sydney or something like that and buy a $1,000 Falcon or something like that and just cruise around in the bloody thing. <laughs> and they get up to Cairns, they hock it off to someone at the backpackers up there for 500 bucks. They hop in it and drive it back down the bloody coast. And some of these cars may never, may not have had rego in some time. But then, in, on the other hand, we we see the police saying that they've got this number plate recognition system. And most police cars now can come up behind a car, and it'll automatically check the numbers. And they had a thing on TV a couple of months ago where a police car was sitting under an overhead bridge on the way into Brisbane. And there's a big, um, it's a motorway, you know, three and four lane motorway. And they were sitting there and, and their number plate recognition technology can do like 16 number plates a second or something like that. So I don't know how these bloody backpackers can get travel up and down Australia with deregistered cars, with no registration, no insurance, no nothing. And how they're not picked up. Because yeah, if I... If I took Goldie, if I deregistered Goldie, left the plate on, took it up to the bottle shop, I'd get nabbed. <laughs> but anyway, um, back to <laughs> back to Tim Jute, and yeah, Chris has got a little um, a, a little low truck with a winch in that on it that he takes his tractors and that around. So I hit him up and asked, would he would he he works at a car wreckers actually? So I asked him, would it be all right if? I helped him load it and if he could take this old Falcon Ute to the wreckers and just get rid of it. So out the back where I've got a few tractors sitting, a few spares, um, you never know when you need a tractor. So um, out the back of the shed here, it's always been a mess and this Ute's been in the middle of it so you yeah, tend to put shit around it. So I got rid of that the other day. So with the blade on the tractor, we're going to shift the farm all 100 and the John Deere's and the other bits and pieces I've got tucked around the back corner there. We're going to shift them all out and we're going to level that nicely. There is road base there now and we're going to level that nicely and some of the tractors out the front, like the barn fine T20 and things like that, we're going to put out the back of the shed and um, just, just do stuff like that. There's bits of old sleepers I've had there so we'll spend a bit of time trying to tidy that up. So, But anyway, look, this weekend this, I haven't picked up a spanner apart from, <laughs> Oh, I had to go to Bunnings and apart from the... Um, the dampener on the rear screen door on the house buggered up, so we had to go to Bunnings and get that. And um, yeah, no mechanic in at all, really. We've just been, or, or no, no hobby stuff in the shed. We've we're just trying to get the place tidied up so we can go away for three weeks, and well, it'll be five weeks. And um, we've got this weekend's nearly buggered. My nephew Ray, he's coming down on Monday afternoon to stay with us to. He's got to take his car in to get the, um, all the wiring done. They have new 12-pin plugs on the new caravans, and he's taking it in there. So normally I have Monday off. This week I'm going to go to work on Monday, and with Ray coming down, he's got to fill the day in somehow. So I said, well, look, how about I'll work Monday, and I'm going to take Tuesday off and spend the day with Ray. He'd like to go to the rum distillery. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, no, pick me. I'll, I'll come. I'll help you, Ray. Hey, bloody good uncle. And, and we'll have to go to the Kelky Moon Distillery and things like that. And uh, just we'll go out for lunch. We'll just spend the day together. And after after nephew Phil um, taking his own life last year or early this year, we sort of the whole family. Well, our Jude and myself and the other nephews, we're making a bit of an effort to um, to keep in contact and and spend time with each other, take, make the effort to spend time. And so they're coming down, Ray's coming down to pick up his, or get his car wide on the Tuesday, then on the Wednesday he picks up his new second-hand caravan and he'll be heading back up to Banana, which is, 
Look, it's about three and a half, well, probably four hours away from here. So, um, so that sort of buggers up. You know, often I do the filming on Mondays. You know, when I, I, I do home duties and sort stuff out in the shed on Saturdays, and Sundays I try and spend on the property here. Um, and Saturdays I get the little jobs done. And, but then Monday, I have a nice quiet time. There's no mowers running, there's nothing. And I try and do the filming in the shed on Mondays, but anyway. So this week there won't be any, but look, we'll see how we go. I did film, I did film putting the top on the 135 six speed, but look, the video, it was just shit. <laughs> it, yeah, there was when I was doing stuff in mono and all that, and I can't seem to, there's something going on at the moment. When I, when I try and copy the track and paste it into the next one, that one's not working, so I may not include that in the series, but we'll see. But look, that's enough for me for the moment. Um, I've got a little video, a little clip coming up at the end here of my three-phase drill, and the old Alfred Herbert, oh, beautiful old drill, but... Um, I've got a few questions about fitting a VFD and, and I, look, I, I think I'm on the right track, but I'll, we'll, we'll swing across and we'll have a bit of a look at the VFD and yeah, look, I'll, I'll catch up with you next week, I'd say. We'll see, we'll see how we go. We have one weekend before we go away and I've, I've got all the fridge out of the Triton and we've cleaned all the fridge and we're cleaning the car and making sure it's nice to go travelling away as well, so... Um, yeah, who knows what I'll get done next week. But anyway, look, have a good week, everyone, and we'll catch up when we can. Today I'm over at the uh, our old, big old Alfred Herbert drill, and look, it's been a beauty old drill over the time. Um, I bought this many, many years ago, and <laughs> I paid a hundred bucks, and I stripped it all down, um, painted it Ferguson grey, which is what we had on hand, funny enough, and. I got it rewired and it used to have three heads up on it. Um, if I can swing you around. Yeah, there was another complete drilling head bolted up here and another one over the other side. So I've left the middle one here and it's a three phase drill and it has a knob up the top here that just does, what does it do? 450. 950, 1450 and 2850 and I find for some of the steel I'm drilling and all that I'm often going too fast so I don't use it a great deal and um, I, I do have a couple of the heads left and in the heads on the three phase motor there um, I think they're only 0.9 of a horsepower the motor but um, the they have a heap of little silver fingers that, that uh, as you turn that power, the speed switch, it, it just, it's like someone playing a bloody <laughs> saxophone, it just little little silver sets of points open and close and that decides how fast it goes. And then up the top we have a forward and reverse lever. So it does go backwards and another great thing about it is that the bed goes up and down the knee. So I'll probably span out a bit and just just show you it. Um, as part of this video but look what we're looking at doing is uh, ever since I've got it going I, I had a friend that was a, uh, an electrician in a um, in a manufacturing plant and um, when I did it he came and wired it up for me and, and um, when I bought it it just had the lead chopped so he had a look at some of the electrics and said oh they'll be fine they'll last for ages so um, so what I did then we we got it up running and we got the three phase to the corner of the shed and um, in the shed here we have a 32 amp three phase outlet that is just buckets for this little thing when we're only running 1.9 of a horsepower motor and it runs quite well um, but the problem with it and look I'll, I'll spin you around over here a little and I'll probably get you down to where where this box is here. Now I've got this plugged in. Now just listen. Now that noise is there all the time. It doesn't affect the running of the drill at all. I can turn it on and Oh, 
Oh, we're just flicking a little bit of grease out of the bearing here. But um, I did it up ages ago and it probably needs, <laughs> needs a bit more of a service now. But um, I'll get rid of that. Now, uh, part of the reason for this video is, is to pick the brains of those of you who watch my channel and are far smarter than me. And look, that's probably most of you. <laughs> I'll just adjust that camera a bit too. That cracked now and then I'm on this old stool, it's a Ford stool. So you know, you know it's gonna have something wrong, eh? And <laughs> God, I'll probably pay for that. But with the buzz there, the uh, it's always concerned me and, and I haven't been sure whether it's the right thing or not. And the Sparky that done it for me is one of those blokes, he'd come and help you, but you know, he wasn't much help after that really, <laughs> if you said, oh, what do you think? It's, no, just don't worry about it. You know, that saved a job. And so, what I've done is I've seen other people putting variable frequency drives on things. So, I bought a variable frequency drive for this drill. And um, with the hope that I could maintain some of the horsepower, um, look, 0.9 of a horsepower, it's, it's not, a, not an awful lot. Um, well, that might be a kilowatt, but anyway. I, I bought a variable frequency drive um, for three phase. It can take five amps in and 3.8 amps out on three, it says 380 volt three phase, but look, everything is written in Chinese. And um, I just flicked grease on my bloody book doing that. And, um, but yeah, it says power three phase, 380 volts, 50 to 60 hertz, five amps, um, output three phase, 380 volts, naught to 300 hertz at three amps, or 3.8 amps. So, um, so my, my question I suppose is, this is, this is all in Chinese, but I have the model here, and where are we? It flashes out a bit. I have the model there, and, and as yet I haven't jumped on Google just to see if there's an English version of this book, but um, there's a lot of gobbledygook gook there, and um, I'm yet to find an English word in it. Um, but look, my, my question is, um, that power board there is no more than on and off, and um, my question is, is if I, put the variable frequency drive up here somewhere out of the way so no swath and that can hit it and wreck it um, look it should probably work all right i'm thinking um, that was my thoughts and then i can get rid of all the old buzz box stuff and um, because we have a main switch down the bottom there and we just have that other on off switch up the top there and then the power comes up through into the motor um, but look, tell us what you think. I'd, I'd be interested for those who have done this. Um, I haven't before, and but yeah, the, the plan is to get rid of that box there and and put this on. So um, yeah, look, anyone that's done it, had me do a video with someone that's done the similar thing. Um, I've watched Mr. Pete and a few of those fellas um, put one on some of their drills and things like that. But um, yeah, look, if, if you've done it, or you can have me do a video where something very similar to this has worked, um, yeah, pop it in the comments for me, please. I'll, um, I'll pan out now, and I'll just show you how it works a little bit, eh? Right, it's over near the compressor here, and look, one of the great things about this drill is, um, and I, I freed all this up when I bought it, it's, you can loosen this fella off, and you can just wind that deck up and down. I usually store it when I'm not using it. I usually store it so that part of the V in the bed there can't be seen because it is near my welding bench because that's where the three phase power is. So then we can we can lock this back in. And, oh, it's a great old drill. It's got a very heavy base. And now if we swing you up to the controls. Can we see that? Yeah, look, we can just. Now, this, this head here, 
it's splined up into the center of the hydraulic motor so the main armature of the motor has a four spline um, a female four spline hollow up it and we can undo this here and we can bring this whole drilling head down to the bottom there or up here so we've got more clearance there as well if we'd like some and then this knob here that changes the speed which is through those points I was I was telling you about and I'll just get you up in the picture a bit more if I actually I'll, I'll shift all this across a little bit get you over in there okay this is here that's 950 2850 450 and 1450 and to go forward reverse you just flick him across so I'll pop the I'll pop the buzzard in and then we just that's a bit noisy at the moment I might check some of these bearings I haven't looked at them in ages That sounds okay, but the bearings could probably do with a bit of a grease, I'd imagine. And that's gone backwards. So, look, it's a lovely old drill. I don't use it as much as I should. Um, my quick and easy go-to drill is behind the arbor press there it's a Taiwanese one I bought years and years ago and look it's needing some work too at the moment so yeah it looks a lovely old bit of gear but yeah that frequency drive that's what we're looking at putting on any advice would be appreciated and look over behind the old Max in here there are Max what a bloody beauty eh I hardly use this thing. Very rarely do I do anything with that. But um, yeah, under the bed of the Maxim with my fencing wire and on a face plate. Um, yeah, there's another drilling head I've kept for spare parts, and there's another one over there. So all in the guts there. They're just um, yeah, just full of little sets of points. And this is one of the one of the spare motor controls and that's how it all works you can see little oh it's hard to see really but there's little little rollers in here see a little cam and that that either opens or shuts points as it comes past this roller here so look well, everything's rock solid here it's just sets of points there's nothing to go wrong I don't reckon so anyway we'll see well here's our driveway this is what I've been spending part of my time doing there's the old barn fine tractor a couple other old clangers that I bought a while back but yeah we've we've been concerned with the driveway in the wet and I don't know what wet we're talking about actually but <laughs> the last wet we had the um, the gravel from the wheel tracks was slowly pushing off to the side so Yesterday we got the blade out and I had a friend Paul here mucking around. We were working on his little Austin and So yeah, we did the we we dressed the driveway and We cleaned the drains next to the driveway then we pulled the gravel from there and we brought it up into the center and I did have a bit of trouble with quite a bit of grass there and yeah, bits of grass. I've got a couple of big buckets that I'd, I I still got the loader out over here and we had a couple of bucket loads of um, grass to get out of it and look there's still some there but I'll probably dress it a little bit more yet when I get time but yeah we just um, because we're going away shortly I was a few little jobs I wanted to jump onto before or well, in case it rained we're going away for three weeks so you never know you're lucky you're living hope haven't you 
And this is a blade. I've had this blade tucked away for ages. And it's a port multi-blade. And it has all these pivot points on it. And then there's a spring-loaded wedge holds it in. And then there's another one holds in the... Can I see that? Yeah. Holds the swing. And then there's another one that does the angle on the blade. So you can actually put that blade way out... At the moment, on the John Deere 2030, it's just out past the rear wheel. But look, we we can sit that out two to three feet behind the rear wheel. Oh, sorry, out to the right of the rear wheel. So that's what I've done the driveway with so far. I should actually get some plumbing done on the 1640, the front loader frame. I haven't done that yet, but this just sits in our little stable. And for those of you <laughs> who ask about the old TEF 20, I'll get over in the shade a little bit. It's sitting in the stable, out of the weather. I moved it over here. We had the room to put it over here. And look, it'll have its turn for sure. It's just at the moment we don't need another project. We've <laughs> we got a shed full of them.